We did 25 subjects in Colorado. We have since uh, then an, um, collected data for 75 uh, people. Some of these individuals are in the room, and some of the people who actually helped us with the study are in the room as well. And I'd like to thank you now publicly for participating in, in various ways. This is subject one, okay, subject A, uh, continuous monitoring. We have three different time periods here that are approximately three minutes uh, long, and we have their heart rate for those three minute segments. So subject A had a heart rate of 58 beats, 56 beats, 58 beats. And this is the information that Dr. Jeff Marangel was given, as well as the, na uh, the um, age, the gender, um, blood pressure, a few other physiological parameters, but he had no idea when someone was exposed, and he would then identify whether he thought their heart was responding, whether it was responding in a positive or a negative fashion. And this is when this particular person was exposed. And you would look at the rhythms of the heart, and I looked at this and tried to figure out if there was a difference, and I couldn't see one. This is another subject, okay? This is um, the times that they were exposed. It was probably something you gathered um, just by looking at it. And this is their heartbeat. This is a person lying down in a totally supine position. Uh, their heart rate jumped from 68 beats a minute to 122 instantly. As soon as we plugged the phone into a live outlet, this is a sham exposure here. It went back down to normal, and then we plugged it in again and got this type of exposure. This is an example of tachycardia, which means a rapid heart rate. One of the people I worked with, after we, whenever someone responded in a very dramatic manner, I would simply tell them at the end of the study, and I would show them their results and say, look, this is how you're responding. And one woman began to cry. And I asked her why she was crying, and she says, well, she says, you know, it's, it's such a relief for me to know I'm not having a heart attack. She would go into certain environments, and her heart would start to race. She'd start to sweat. She'd become incredibly anxious, and she thought she was having a heart attack. Her heart was perfectly healthy according to the data that we were collecting, and it was simply responding to the environment that she was in. And just to show you that it wasn't just one individual who responded, this is another person, subject C. There's some, uh, this is the kind of information that Dr. Marangel would get. Uh, this is the heart re uh, uh, the rate per uh, three minute period. And once again, you can see here that this was the decked phone exposure, the live exposure. Here you can see an increase. Oh, I've just uh, exceeded my time. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, the other thing we were able to find out is how it affected your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the gas pedal on your car. The parasympathetic nervous system is the brake. This is uh, showing what happens. Here, you know, you're pushing the gas down and you're taking your foot off the brake. And it's the same type of thing. If you saw a grizzly bear walking down the street, you would probably hightail it out there. And it would really help you if your heart started beating really quickly, because you need that blood circulating to get your legs pumping and moving. And this is what was happening every single time. So we were able to actually determine what was being affected in your body. This person self-diagnosed themselves as being, being moderately sensitive. We identified them as being very sensitive to this frequency. Here's another example, and I'm just going to go over this very quickly quickly. This is the first time they were exposed. You can see a little bit of irregularity. This is the second time they were exposed, the third time, and the fourth time. And you can see that multiple exposures uh, were progressively worse. So this person was able to tolerate it for a while, and then eventually the stress levels were going up. And this person didn't know if they were sensitive. We identified them as being moderate to very sensitive. The significance? I think some heart diseases are being misdiagnosed, uh, and I think there's unnecessary and excessive medication being given to people who don't have a, a heart problem at all. They're reacting to their electromagnetic environment. The solution, I think we have to ban deck technology globally, and we have to minimize our microwave exposure. The very last example I'm going to show you is something that I've just started. I haven't, um, I've only worked on myself. I haven't tested anyone else yet. Uh, and it's looking at uh, basically my blood to see how it's affected by electromagnetic energy. 
I bought a, a, a mask that's called an MRS-2000, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Stimulation. So I'm interested not only the harmful effects of this radiation, I'm also interested in the healing effects of electromagnetic energy. And so I thought I would start uh, testing myself. One of the ways they sell this product is they say that after you lie on it for a very short period of time, your blood cells separate and they're free floating, and so you've got a lot of oxygen exchange uh, between the cells. And so I thought, well, I'll just test myself. I've got a microscope. I can do this and pricked my finger, took a blood sample, and this is what I got. Okay, this was on August 19th of this year. And that doesn't look too healthy. It means my blood cells are actually clumping together. So I was quite disturbed when I saw that. Anyway, I laid on the mat uh, for an eight minute period, set on sensitive, and this is what it did to my heart, which is basically what they show you when they're selling this mat. And that looks like incredibly healthy cells. They're all separated. They're able to exchange oxygen, get rid of waste products. So I was impressed, uh, but I was quite disturbed by what my blood looked like. And I realized I had been working on a computer just before I did my, uh, the first uh, sample. And so the next day, I, I did a little bit more systematically. I laid on this mat, looked at my blood. I worked around the house away from any kind of wireless technology because I wanted to find out how long my blood would remain in this unclumped fashion. And one of the things you can see is there's a little bit of stickiness, but there's still quite a few cells that are, are uh, nice and loose and healthy looking. This is uh, 70 minutes after working on a computer. So for me, I'm responding to that computer. My blood is st becoming very, very sticky. I then uh, laid on a bed, because you're lying on a mat when you, when you, and I thought, well, maybe just lying down will make a difference. This is 10 minutes later, so if I leave my computer and simply rest in a clean environment, that stickiness goes away very, very quickly. And then I went on the mat again, um, and um, basically it cleared up. So you can see the similarity between these two, the similarity between these two, and the, the very bad looking blood. That day, someone called me. I have a cordless phone in my home that's not a decked phone. And I was talking on it for about 10 minutes, and I thought, well, I just wonder what, what that did to my blood. And this is what it did to my blood. Okay, this is called rouleau formation, absolutely horrible. And this is what my blood looked like an hour prior to that. So, you know, the good news about this is I think we've got um, another potential diagnostic where we, that we can use on people as a biomarker uh, to find out how it's affecting their blood. And I have a really short little video here um, on, uh, what your blood, on what your blood does. The capillaries are so narrow that red cells must squeeze through in single file, showing the importance of their elasticity. So you can see here that if you have this kind of blood formation, you're not going to have uh, uh, very good oxygen exchange. So the significance of this is lower oxygen transport, uh, reduction in waste products. And I think it could lead to many of the symptoms that people who are electrically sensitive suffer from. Headaches, fatigue, difficulty concentration, numbness, tingling in the fingers, all sorts of things. The solution, I haven't got a clue, okay? Um, is EHS physiological or psychological? In my mind, it's physiological, uh, and we've got evidence for this. It's not an idiopathic illness because we've been associating it with all sorts of technology. Who needs to know about this? And this is my last slide. Uh, people who are suffering, doctors who are helping people who are suffering, policymakers, manufacturers, so they can actually design equipment that's safe for teachers and parents so we can protect our children, and the media so that they can make this publicly available. Sorry I took so much time, thank you. <laughs>